Okay, so we're trying something a little bit different for this project, or projects, as I suspect it will end up being. Feeling cute? Might delete this later. Certainly will delete this later. Not feeling that cute. Uh, that was really pointless. Anyway, um, it's Friday. I am honestly feel like I've achieved nothing today except bleaching my hair, which is not true. Um, so I've got... where is it? So I have this pattern, um, which you probably can't see. Let's see if I can... Apologies to the reflection. It's either a suit or a two-piece dress, depending on what you're asking. The pencil on the front says 1950s, but I've looked this pattern up online, and it came up as 1949, and so that's what I am going off. And I started off making the skirt out of this houndstooth wool, and I really like it. It needs the... The waistband needs to be hand finished and, uh, and I've got to put closures in which I need to get because apparently I, um, for the first time in like five years, I've run out of hooks and eyes and snaps so I have to go get some more snaps for this skirt. The pattern instructions, <laughs> in fact let me grab them, these pattern instructions are adorable. Um, the skirt instructions say to finish it with snaps, but then it's just like, if you would like to finish it with a slide fastener, follow the instructions on the slide fastener, uh, which I think is a zip, which would put this kind of, yeah, 40s, that would, that would make sense. Zips are around, but they're not in kind of common usage yet. Anyway, so I made that skirt, and I really like it, but the big houndstooth reads way too 80s for me, so I don't think it's going to work. It's going to work for me to wear, I don't think it's going to work for this 1940s inspired game. So this is everything pinned out on this kind of grim royal blue suiting. It's 100% synthetic awful something, and I'm not looking forward to using it, but I think it's going to give me something fairly solid that I can work off as a base. I'm a little worried that I'm going to end up looking like an air hostess, that's not inherently a problem. The main problem that I have with this pattern is that it is actually too small for me. That's surprisingly rare, even for vintage patterns. I don't often get something that is genuinely much too small. But, uh, so this is a size 11? which I think is supposed to be a 28 inch bust. I have a feeling this is actually sized for teenagers rather than adults, but it still almost fits me, so whatever. But that's kind of why I've got everything pinned out with so much space between them. So the skirt I've done once already, and basically all I need to do for the skirt is add 5 eighths of an inch to it, all the sides, um, and it pretty much fits. I sort of have to freehand the waistband, but the waistband is uh, just a rectangle anyway. The bodice pieces, which I've got all laid out here, they're gonna take a little bit more finessing. I measured the sort of net across the bust. It comes out at like 35 inches, which is actually fine for me. I would feel pretty comfortable in that, but I have a feeling that the waist is going to come out again just too small, uh, and it doesn't obviously need to fit looser than the waist on the skirt does. So I'm going to do some measuring. It's got, they've got, the pieces have the waistline marked on them, so I should be able to again just measure across and figure out what the net waist on the jacket is, and then just add a bit on. And you can also see that I've not pinned down the bottom half of the bodice pieces yet, and that's because I am really long in the body, so I need to move those down by about an inch. There is a line, which is sort of lengthen or shorten at this line, um, and what you can do is cut that and move it down and insert extra bits of paper or whatever, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut the top and then I'm gonna just shift it down. It's that's that's not how you're supposed to do it, but I don't since this is a vintage pattern, I don't really wanna 
start cutting up the pattern pieces and messing around with it in case I ever do pass this on to someone else. And then on the sleeves, you can see it's the same thing. I've left this bottom part free because the sleeves are really short and I need to lengthen them by at least an inch, if not two inches, uh, in order for them to come down to my actual wrists. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. The next thing to do is get this all cut out. Cool, so we are mid cutting things out. I've cut out the skirt and the uh, bodice facings. I'm now onto the bodice pieces themselves. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with the bust on this because I'm kind of flat and I think it'll fit fine. But for the waist, I've measured across, it came out at about 24 inches, which is a bit small. So I've just gone in and marked with pins um, three eighths of an inch on either side of the waist, which over, oh, hang on, maths. It's gonna give me a few extra inches, okay? <laughs> I, I did the maths and then immediately forgot it. So a couple of extra inches in the waist and so I'm going to cut out the tops of these and then I'm going to shuffle them all down by about an inch to cut out the bottom half of these uh, because that seemed like a good idea at the time. Now that I'm actually doing it, I'm not sure this was the smartest plan, but it'll be fine. Okay, so as you can see, I've cut things out with a little bit of extra. Um, it's more noticeable on that piece. Just kind of graded it in by eye and added in a little bit extra around the waist. And then with this piece, I haven't done this one yet, I've marked where the length and shortened line was and I've moved it down by an inch because that's about how much I need. And I've pinned the, I guess it's a peplum, um, so I've pinned the peplum down and so I'm now just going to kind of grade that back in again and go around the outside and yeah, this is this is not the way you're supposed to do pattern adjustments but it seems to have worked so we're going to roll with it. Okay, so everything's cut out and I've just laid out the bodice pieces, lined up everything and snipped in the notches. The notches are these guys here. You want those all marked so you can line everything up. And now, just trying to follow the instructions, which are dense. It mostly seems kind of self-explanatory. Put the darts in, join everything together. Put the collar on, you put the facings on sleeves question mark anyway um i'm trying to just going to go step by step see what happens and if i hit anything weird i'll try and figure it out these old pattern instructions are not always the clearest but we'll see what we can do so we're putting the darts in now this one i've already done i still need to press it so right now it's all bubbly and not actually sure how well this suiting is going to press out but that's fine. So I think I showed in one of my other videos how I thread mark the dots for the dart. I'm not always hugely accurate sewing these but I'm normally pretty close but I missed, the camera didn't work quite right so I missed out showing how I um, finish them. Watch me fail to thread a needle. So the long tails at the point of the dart if you just snip those off, um, it'll unravel. A lot of people will just knot them and leave a little tail. I think that looks kind of messy. So I thread them onto a needle and then kind of weave it in. So I stitch through the dart a couple of times and I bury the end between the two layers. Come on. So, 
Come on, camera, focus. Yeah. So I've just woven the needle in and out a couple of times, and then I'm going to try and... Nope. Yeah, bury the end. So you can see here, the needle's in between the two layers of fabrics. Bob it out. Right at the end. The needle's too big for this, but... Trim off those there. And there you go. That's going to be invisible and really secure. Got the side fronts and the fronts. Um, and we're supposed to sew them together along these this seam, uh, easing the fullness between the notches. So what I've done here is I've just done a line of basting stitches. So the longest possible stitch um, between the two notches quite close to the edge, so well within the seam allowance. Um, and so you line everything up up to the notch. And we'll pin that. Yes, I know, look at me, I'm using pins. Um, and then you line everything up at the bottom as well. So, got two more notches at the waist here that should line up, pin that too, and then we'll shuffle this back. This might get a bit funky because obviously I added that extra uh, onto the waist both in terms of length and in terms of width, then it's made the pieces slightly odd shape. Um, so you end up with this, where this is longer than that, although not by much. Uh, on a modern pattern there would be way more here, but I guess this pattern was for a like 28 inch bust, so all I'm doing here is pulling the top thread to so this is how you would gather it but what you don't actually want is gathers you want it to be as flat as possible and just sort of slightly roughly like it's sort of when it's when it's done it looks in fact that's actually almost too there we go you generally get sort of a slightly rippled look at the top but the whole fabric just sort of slightly compresses without ever actually forming the little tucks that would make it properly gathered and you get slightly more fullness on one side of the seam than the other. That's how you do bust shaping. That's also generally how you do sleeve heads. Uh, so when a pattern says to ease between the notches, that's what you do. Okay, so that went pretty well. Um, so we've sewn the bodice together. You can see there, it's, it's inside out right now, but there's the back. It's all shadows. Um, so the back's all done up. I haven't done up the side seams yet. Um, and the reason for that is because they want you, well, they want you to sew the side seams up and then day stitch around the neckline and then make up the collar and attach it on. That's way easier to do if you don't close up the side seams because then you can make the bodice flat. Um, so we're going to sew the collar. I'm going to, it's got this really funky shape. So I'm going to thread mark that dot that I need to aim in for. Sew all the different layers together, clip the interfacing back down, clip the collar, turn it out stay stitch the neckline, sew the two together and then we can finally close up the side seams. Um, it's all very exciting. Okay well I forgot to film for most of today so we've skipped ahead a little bit. Um, so the body's all made up, the collar is more or less in um, and I, what I've done is attached the facing which is this green thing that you can see all the way around. So you can see I've clipped one of the corners and I've taken the interfacing all the way back to the seam. 
I'm going to finish grading these seams all the way around. I'm going to clip into all of the curves so they turn out nicely. Then we can flip the whole thing around to the other side. These edges, uh, the pattern's kind of ambiguous on what you do with them. Although they suggest using seam binding, I think that's the same as bias binding. So that's what I'm going to use. And then I'll tack those to the seam allowances on the inside of the jacket. Oh, I caught that. I'll fix that. Oh, I caught a couple of them. That's annoying, but anyway, I'll fix those. And, um, and then we'll pretty much have a solid made up body of the jacket and I just need to put the sleeves together and in, uh, which is really nice. I really need to get better at this whole vlogging thing because I'm just not filming for whole steps and stages. And uh, it's dark now, so we're gonna get weird shadows on that stuff. Anyway, that's the inside of the fi facing all finished with bias binding. Uh, I'm gonna put some more bias binding over that raw bit of the inside of the collar, but I'm not, I'm gonna do that by hand um, because otherwise it will be visible if I use machine top stitching. So that's that. And then I've working on the sleeves. So these are the cuffs which I've sewn together and I've graded, can you see if I, yeah. So I've graded the edges of the seams so they'll lie better when they're turned inside out. I still need to clip them all. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And we're on to the sleeves themselves which are slightly more complicated than I gave them credit for. So I thought this was just a dart, um, but it turns out it's actually, it's a dart to here, and then this isn't actually an opening, which means that I do need to finish the edges of these somehow. And again, they suggest using seam binding, but I'm not sure if I have enough of that bias binding left. So that's gonna be interesting. We shall, see how that turns out. But anyway, so I'm going to turn this, the cuffs out first and then I'll look at putting these sleeves. Oh yeah, and to top it all off, they've got this section needs to be eased in because it's a different length to that section, um, which is nice. It's going to make a really nicely fitting sleeve when it's finally done, but wow, they've made it complicated for me. Anyway, so that's where I'm at with that right now. And I was kind of hoping I'd get this finished today and I really don't think I will. But that's how it is sometimes. See if you can tell me what is wrong with this picture. I've done all the things that I need to do with the sleeves, which I think I went over in the last clip, so I'm not gonna say it again. If it turns out I didn't say them in the last clip, I'll do a voiceover. Hello. Oi, do, do, do you mind? <sighs> anyway, as you can see here, having done all the incredibly fussy uh, easing at the, easing, it was gathering at the elbow and inserting the vents and putting the dart and the vent in and all of this, um, I've made two right sleeves instead of a right and a left. I have no idea how I managed this, but it would appear that I have. So now we have to fix it, which I'm not gonna do tonight. Um, <laughs> so these things happen to the best of us. Sometimes you just make a silly mistake. In this case, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unpick one of the sleeves, whichever one I decide I like least and then I'm gonna call that a night. It's rarely a good idea to force yourself to keep going after you've made a mistake, undo the mistake, and then stop and take a break because clearly you were not in the right mindset to do this right now. And like, I still have a week to finish this. So even though I'm supposed to be working on the really secret project, ASAP. Yeah, not gonna worry about that right now. What we're going to do is unpick the sleeve and then put it to one side and come back to it tomorrow. Wow, this really doesn't want to focus. Anyway, so this is the newly finished jacket. 
it's not great. The fit's not amazing. Um, it's still a little bit too tight on the waist. So I probably could have added a bit more in there and yet yeah, it's kind of... If I turn sideways you can see it's kind of baggy in the back. Um, this is puffier than it should be because I haven't tacked the facing up yet and it's just bagging out. The cuffs are okay. Again, they're not as cute as I hoped. It's got that nice sort of 1940s shoulder. Still need to put, um, should really put buttons and buttonholes on it, but I'm kind of feeling like I might just, I don't know, do snap fastenings or something really quick because yeah, I really don't think I'm going to wear this a great deal in future. It's just kind of adequate. So anyway, I've got a long car journey, so I'm going to finish up the sleeves, which are still a lot raw edges. I'm going to tack up the facings. I'm going to put closures on the skirt and then probably also closures on this jacket as well. Like I say, that might just be, might just be snaps. And we'll see where we are at that point. Um, but yeah, kind of regretting this fabric choice, but we live and learn. So with any luck at this lop, I will end up completely covered in fake blood and this will be therefore unusable in future. We can but hope. Hello, hello. It's actually the week after one by one and this is the finished suit. Probably can't see a damn thing because I'm standing with my back to the light and it's a dark color. So all in all, not my most successful make ever. Hello Thursday. Um, but nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. The fabric was a mistake. Um, I picked this blue suiting out basically because I had a lot of it and I wanted them to match. It's kind of hideous. Um, I know why I didn't want to make anything out of this. The pattern is pretty good. The skirt's great. I think I'm going to use this um, quite a bit more just to make... It makes quite long A-line skirts on me. Um, and it's really relatively easy to size up. This one's actually could be uh, tighter, um, but I half-assed sewing the snap fasteners on. Um, yes, hello. Hello, who's a good boy? I'm not letting you into the wardrobe Thursday. No. Back to the suit. The jacket needs some work. So the fit in the top half is actually good. The waist is still too tight. And because I tapered down into the waist increase, I've actually got, I don't know how well you can see, but I've got kind of too much in the seams further up. Um, I'm not sure how to square that with also having the flare at the bottom for the peplum. I think what I need to actually do is trace the pattern pieces, split each one up the middle to probably like under bust-ish, spread them out by the amount that I want, which is like, it's like a quarter of an inch on each panel, so it's not a lot, and then retrace that in. Um, so that's a slightly more involved pattern hack. I don't know if I can be bothered. Um, the sleeves are great. I got the length right, um, which is really gratifying. I kind of only, this is gonna sound ridiculous, I kind of only figured out less than a year ago, yeah, less than a year ago, um, in January, that I have a really long torso. And, because I'm slightly tall, and I always figured that was legs, and it turns out no. Uh, every single pattern that I own and pretty much all of my clothes sit above my natural waist because I'm long in the body as well. So uh, now I just drop every waistline by about an inch and that seems to work. Uh, and I got a much better fit in things. 
Yeah, the jacket is still really too tight in the waist, so I didn't quite add enough. Also reeks of perfume, good lord. So, in summary, not everything you make turns out the way you think it should. Not everything you make is something that you're entirely happy with. I definitely felt that I could have done a better job with this kit brief and this character than this. But would that have made me have more fun at the game? I don't know. It certainly would have made me have more fun making this kit because it was a slog to finish this. I really didn't want to do it. Hence why the front is held on with exactly three snap fasteners and not anything better than that because I just really didn't want to finish this. But it it got finished in time, I had something to wear, it was okay, and we're done now. We can move on. The thing I will definitely take away from this is that if I'm having doubts about a fabric, I should just not. Unless I'm, unless I'm really excited about it, I should just not. Um, and Thursday has run away again, so no more cat content for you. That's everything from me for now, and I will see you all next time. Oh, and give me money on Kofi. It's a thing you can do. You should do it. I decided to get over my reluctance to advertise myself by uh, just being really, really blunt. Let me know how that's working for you in the comments below. Thank you, and 